Have you seen 300? It's 300 Spartans versus all of these Persians. How are you gonna defeat these Persians, bro? How are you gonna take down this Persian army? That sounds racist as crap, huh? Um, anyway, that's how it feels sending to an oversaturated market. In today's video, I'm gonna properly share how to send a cold email to a saturated market. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure to hit that subscribe button, ring that bell for more notifications. And if you wanna work with me directly, check out email10k.com. Cold email has been working for a long time and it'll continue to exist in the future. Cold email, if you guys don't know, is sending an email to somebody that does not know you, pitching your product or service in a way that gets them to buy. And it's a superpower. If you master cold email, you will now have the ability to pitch anyone on your service. So your location doesn't matter, your race doesn't matter, your religion, your gender, none of that matters if you're able to write a good cold email pitch because the world is your oyster at that point. Here are a few reasons why your cold email campaigns might be going like this instead of like this. Check this out. If your cold emails aren't working, there could be several factors behind it. So let's go through these one by one and see what can we do to improve your cold email campaigns. First question to ask is, are you targeting a niche? It's very important to define a specific niche, meaning most people will go out there, it's not niche, by the way, it's niche. Most people will go out there and say that they want to sell to SaaS businesses and they think that that is a niche. Or they'll say, I wanna to sell to all B2B companies and think that that's a niche. No, with a cold email campaign, you wanna make it seem like you're sending an email directly to that prospect. You have sat down at your computer, you wrote one email to one guy, and that person is now receiving the email, they're reading the email, and they're seeing an interaction. There's an interaction there. It's not like a Facebook ads one-to-many approach, even though that's exactly what we're doing. In order to make it seem more relevant to the prospect, you need to niche down. So instead of saying you sell to SaaS, you should say, I sell to financial software. I sell to financial SaaS. Or I sell to consumer games companies. All of those are technically software, but they're also the other thing. And by going specific, by targeting an exact niche, you'll increase the response rates and everything related to your cold email campaign. And the final note on that, the more specific you can get at picking the niche, the better it's gonna be. So instead of financial services SaaS, you might target like financial services SaaS that are built on WordPress websites. Now you can reach out and say, hey, you know, WordPress isn't the most effective thing. Or maybe you're a master at improving WordPress sites. Whatever that tool is, the more niche you can get, the more personal you can get, and the better your campaigns are going to do. The next thing to consider is, are you presentable online? A lot of people, when they start their cold emailing campaigns, they think that they can just create a bunch of Gmail accounts with aliases, makeup names, like maybe you're in India, you make up like an American guy, or you're a dude in America, you make up a woman, and you just send as them instead of you. And you think that that will increase your conversion rate. The problem is, Cold email does not exist in a bubble. What happens when somebody receives your cold email is they're either gonna Google your name, they'll type in the domain name that the email came from, or they'll Google your company and they'll search for things about you. And the more that you have about your business and your brand, the better your cold emails do. We get responses from people that we get responses from because we have all of this content online about cold email, about sales, now about SaaS with Taplio and LeadShark and the other SaaSes that we have going. And because of that, we get responses that other people don't. And it doesn't mean have a crazy personal brand. Our clients at our email outreach agency, X27, just need great websites, great case studies, and some info to back people up. It could also be as simple as does your company show up on your LinkedIn profile? Do you have a LinkedIn profile when they check? Things like that really help in improving your cold email campaigns. Another question you could ask is, do you have a case study? And check this out. This shows exactly the power of a good case study. We help you grow without paid ads by using advanced email marketing techniques and have already helped XYZ competitor double their revenue in the last six months. Notice how adding that case study right at the end is what took it over the top. It's what takes your regular offer and turns it into a no-brainer offer. It's what turns a deleted email into a responded to email. And speaking about the offer, another thing to talk about is make a solid offer. A lot of our customers or viewers, maybe you, are selling web design or copywriting or other services like that. And when you approach people via cold email, you're so used to inbound. 
You're so used to marketplaces like Upwork where somebody will say, hey, I need a logo. And then you'll come in and you're like, oh, I do logos and all this other stuff. And then they'll be like, oh, cool, I only need a logo and they'll hire you. In cold email, it's not like that. You're the one making the offer. So if you go in and you email a random company and you say, hey, I offer design services, branding, UX, UI, I can do mobile application design, I can even do the backend coding if you need that, I can do SEO outreach, I can do cold email outreach and lead generation, Facebook ads, they're gonna delete the email. You need to make one solid offer in your cold email in order to get people to respond. Work on your offer, sell one specific thing, and sell something that actually matters. But if the customer can't understand what you're selling, that's a red flag. If the customer can understand what you're selling and sees no value in what you're selling, that is also a red flag. Both of those can be fixed. If the customer doesn't understand what you're selling, you can explain it better. If the customer understands what you're selling but doesn't see the value, then you need to explain the value better. Both of those are fixable, but sometimes you're just selling something that doesn't have any value. And if that's the case, you're gonna have to sell something else. The next way to succeed with cold email in an oversaturated market is to improve your campaigns based on data. You don't wanna go out there and send 10,000 emails on your first blast with an untested script and see what happens. That's how you end up marked to spam, that's how you end up losing domain names, and it's just not gonna be a good time for anybody. Instead, you should send in batches of 200 cold emails and measure after each one. How's the open rate on the emails? How's the bounce rate? If the bounce rate's too high, the lead quality is not gonna be very good. And it's better to learn that after 200 leads than after you've sent to a million leads and lost your domain name. Not that I'd recommend sending a million cold emails at once. And if you want a free checklist on how to go through this, I would actually check out the link down below, or you can just click here, email10k.com slash checklist. We have a free checklist that you can use for your cold email campaigns to improve them. Another thing to think about is, are you following up enough? Your customers, especially if they're high level people, like directors of marketing at major brands or directors of IT at big companies, billion dollar companies, or even hundred million dollar companies, these people are receiving emails, hundreds of cold emails a day, and your email will have to stand out in that battlefield. One of the best ways to do that is to follow up in different directions. So for instance, let's say you send a mid-length email for the first email. You might wanna send a one sentence follow-up, or you might wanna send a two paragraph or three paragraph follow-up, and also varying your follow-up times. Maybe you sent your first cold email at 10 a.m. their time, now your follow-up should go out at 1 p.m. a few days later. Maybe you sent your first email on a Monday, your follow-up should go out on a Thursday or some other day. If you vary your sending dates and times, you're more likely to reach their inbox at the time that they're going to respond to your email. For cold emails, typically we'll follow up four times maximum. And for warm emails, after a customer has expressed interest, we will never stop following up until we get a yes or a no. That means following up monthly for years, if it takes years, or following up weekly for months, if it takes months, however long it takes. If you wanna meet me, you wanna to talk to me every week, get help on your business, then check out Email 10K. It's not just me, it's a community of like-minded, awesome people, all working to improve their cold email campaigns, grow their agencies, and take over the world. If you wanna join that, go on over to email10k.com. It also comes with access to every course we've ever made. Make sure to like this video and subscribe down below for more videos like this, cold email tutorials, tips to grow your agency, et cetera, and I'll talk to you soon. Thanks for watching, I'm Alex Berman.